Hello, welcome to another video. So this time I thought, why don't we look at another catalogue? Now I love catalogues when it comes to toy catalogues. They're, you know, they really are a thing of the past. Don't really get them anymore in, in toys anymore, which is quite sad really. As a kid, opening these things and flipping through them and choosing which toy you wanted next or which toy you wanted for your birthday. You know, it was almost as magical as getting the toy itself. So this is the Kenner um, catalogue. I got this when I purchased a, I think it was a 12 inch Chewbacca. So it came out in 1978. So this is dated 77, but I imagine it was probably put in the toys in 78. So I'm not 100% sure if this was the first ever catalogue, but it's one of the early ones. So I thought we'd have a quick flip through and see what was available at the time. So on page one, it says here from the blockbuster movie, nine more action figures plus the original 12. So if my math is good, this is the original 21 back, 21 figures. So you've got the original 12, plus you've got the new figures. Power Droid, Greedo, R5, D4, Hammerhead, Snuggletooth, Death Star Droid, uh, Walrus Man, he was one of the new ones, wasn't he? Um, and then you also have Boba Fett, which is the, um, the cool new figure to get hold of. And then obviously with Star Wars toys, they brought out the carry case. Now the problem with the carry cases I find is when you put your figures in them with their weapons, as soon as you hold it up normal, they all slip out. But those kids look pretty happy with their new R2D2. The best thing about catalogues is you occasionally will see some of the toys don't look exactly as they were produced. Ben's cape looks a bit darker than usual, that sort of thing. So on the next page we have Land of the Jawas place set. Um, recreate the adventure of R2-D2, C-3PO and the Jawas on Luke Skywalker's home planet Tatooine. It includes simulated escape landing pod, which holds two figures. Figures not included as always. This is basically just a piece of cardboard on a plastic shell, um, easily breakable. Um, it's actually one of the things that you, I, think, I find quite hard to find nowadays, because it keeps breaking really. The cardboard gets scuffed up and torn and the plastics easily break. Then we have the Millennium Falcon. Now I did not know that the Millennium Falcon in the UK did not come out into the Empire Strikes Back toy line. It was never produced with the original Star Wars um, artwork. Death Star Space Station. This is the um, free four tier kind of like cake plastic thing. Uh, it's different than the Palo toy one in the UK which is made of cardboard. Personally I think the cardboard one's better but this has got more features to it, really. Then you've got the Imperial Troops Transporter, which I don't think appears in the films. It's one of my favourite toys. It's very, to me, it's very iconic of the early 70s. Sorry, late late 70s, but early Star Wars toys. Um, I've got one in my collection, and it's an amazing thing. They appear in future films, I believe, and they appear in, like, comics and stuff. Then you've got Duke Back. I don't think that was released in the UK. I think it was only released in the States. But relatively easy to get hold of. The Creature Katina set. But the, this is quite fun actually. When I first started collecting toys, I started collecting Star Wars. My Star Wars collection still is very much a case of if I find it, I'll add it to my collection. I'm not going to go and spend loads of money on it. I don't buy stuff off, off of eBay. I very rarely buy stuff off Facebook groups when it comes to Star Wars stuff. Um, nothing wrong with doing that if you're into that thing. But I actually prefer to just wait and see what happens when I find it. Because I'm not a massive Star Wars collector, even though I do enjoy obviously the Star Wars collecting hobby. It's one of those things where it's so vast it can go on forever. But somebody I know messaged me and said, there's a shop that has this for sale for £50 in box and the box looked absolutely in mint condition. So I bought it, did not realize how much it was worth. It's, and now they're going for £200 plus. Droid Factory, here you can build your own R2-D2, comes with 31 pieces, I believe. Yeah, 31 pieces. Um, very cool, nothing like it in the film. It's just one of those random toys they made. But it's cool that you can actually build your own R2-D2 and he's different than the um, the one, the normal action figure. I believe he has a third leg. Then you've got Darth Vader's TIE Fighter. And you've got the X-Wing and the Luke's uh, Lance Vader and the normal TIE Fighter. Then you've got the cool um, radio-controlled R2-D2. Uh, be very kind of like of its time. I never really see these in people's collections really. They're not that hard to come by, but they're lovely. And then even more amazing is the Jawa Sand uh, Corder, which is river controlled as well. 
really cool, quite hard to find. I don't see many in people's collections. I don't think they made that money. I wouldn't be surprised if it was only limited to North America and not in the UK. I can't even, not even tell you what, what the box looks like, because the box, I don't think I've ever seen the box actually. I'm pretty sure people do have them, but very rare item. If you find one of those, don't throw it away, and, you know, even in, even if it's bad condition. They got the usual board games and electronic games. I didn't realise there are so many Star Wars games. I thought there was only one, the big box one that everybody has. But no, there's loads. Diecast Collection, um, Series 1. Now, if I'm right in thinking, Series 2 had the twin pod cars, Boba Fett Slave 1 and the TIE Bomber. The TIE Bomber being the most hardest one to find on card. I think something like on the long lines of only 10,000 were ever made. So if you imagine 10,000, it's not that, not that impressive. That, uh, not impressive. It's not that many when you think about Star Wars collectors over the years. How many kids would have bought these things, opened them up, played with them? So finding a TIE Bomber on card been quite expensive. Um, this is my favourite thing to collect. This is the um, 12 inch range. So these are like, if you will, Action Man or G.I. Joe, if you're in the States, large figures. So you've got C3PO, Obi Wan Kenobi, Jawa, R2D2, Darth Vader, Princess Leia, with her cool hair buns, which you can actually get a brush inside, which you can make more different hairstyles. Chewbacca, Luke, Stormtrooper, Han Solo, and Boba Fett. Now, I have every single one of those apart from Han Solo. And he is going up and up and up in price when complete because that medal is usually missing. I had one for sale about three, four years ago for £65 complete. And I wish I snapped him up because he's so hard to find now. I have C4PO, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Darth Vader, Princess Leia, Chewbacca, Luke in box. Uh, I'm missing Boba Fett, Han Solo, obviously. Missing the Stormtrooper box, I'm missing the R2D2 and the Jawa box. Um, then we have some weapons. Lightsaber, they're really cool, but they break all the time. My uncle told me a tale that one day on Christmas he got it. He was so happy to get it. He opened it up, thought it was amazing, and then within five, five minutes, my other uncle had already broken it. The laser rifle was really cool. Um, in 1989, 1990, Kenner used this gun for a, a Batman gun. They stuck Batman sticker on the side, and they stuck a big weird orange Batman logo on the front, and it became a Batman gun. Kind of really good at recycling their toys. And then we have the Star Wars laser pistol, Han Solo's pistol. That is a really cool pistol. I have one in my collection, and I have a really cool acrylic case, acrylic stand that goes, um, it goes on to. And then we have the jigsaw puzzles. Lots of jigsaw puzzles. So many of these around. If you really want to start collecting Star Wars stuff, figures can be quite expensive. Um, but you can pick up a loose run for under, if you're lucky, for under a £1,000 if you're really lucky. But, um, you know, card stuff's quite expensive nowadays, especially from this sort of period. But puzzles are quite cheap. If you want to give her a complete Star Wars puzzle line, you can do that quite well, quite easily. Then you've got some other random stuff. You've got the Star Wars bot bags, R2 there being punched around. It's a bit weird, though. I don't want to punch you know, R2 around these. Lovely, but no. Plush toys, they're really cool. The Chewbacca one is amazing. I'd love to have that. I'd love to have one. It might be one of the things where I might track it down one day. And you've got Play Doh set. Play Doh has always been a popular seller. Um, so why not have a Play Doh action set for your Star Wars characters? They did a really cool one for Richard and the Jedi where they did um, Jabba the Hutt. And then you have the SSP vans. You can get some vans with Star Wars characters on the sides. To me, this is like the worst toy they, they ever do. Uh, you see these like these Hot Wheels toys where they're like Star Wars Hot Wheels toys. I mean, they're not even, they're like trucks and vans. I don't understand why that, that doesn't exist in the Star Wars universe. So why would anybody want that? But, you know, any old crap, they can put Star Wars on itself. And you got the more art stuff. So you got like the Dip Dots painting sets, Star Wars toothbrush, Star Wars poster set. And of course, Star Wars movie viewer at the top, you can get an alien one of these from the alien film. Why would they, why would they, you know, marketing alien towards kids is unbelievable, but you can do. And there you go, give a show projector. These give a show projectors are quite easy to get hold of, actually. Um, you can get Doctor Who ones, you can get ones of Batman, I've got a few in my own collection, and a few for sale. And last but not least, look for these other exciting kind of toys. So, you've got the Radical, Rad, Rad, Radark Muscle Control Machine. Um, which is you kind of like control it by squeezing your arm 
and he rolls along. That's really weird. Um, then you have the Butch and Sundance. So the they really tried to push these kind of like um, Wild West action figures in the late seventies, early eighties, and they're pretty cool. They're pretty kind of like you know well made, quite realistic looking things. I think this character here, which is either Butch or Sundance, I think it's Butch, is kind of like model a remodel um, Luke Skywalker farm boy. They got the early days mint wagon, which we've had all the gold and money in. But yeah, so that was the Kenner early nineteen seventy eight, I believe, toy catalogue. Bit of fun looking for it. I love seeing the Death Star upside down. That is really cool. Because obviously in the film there's like that, isn't it, all the time. But if you ever if you watch Rogue One, the modern Star Wars film, Death Star is actually this way around for a bit in one of the scenes, which is really cool. Because in space, everything's not relative, is it? But yeah, really cool. If you ever find these catalogues, they're worth a bit of money. Some people pay. Some rare ones could be worth quite a lot. I don't know what this is worth. But anyway, thank you for watching. Appreciate it as always. Until next time, see you again.